Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, me. Oh, you don't lose it, son! <laughs> Thank you, Vinny. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, Roy Lupton is shooting pelts with a pellet to test penetration. If you'd like to purchase one of our authentic Field Sports Channel Christmas candles, details online. We have the regulars hunting YouTube and new stuff. First, Vinny. It's Vinny. He has returned to what he calls his sporting home, or should that be his manor? Six mile bottom in Cambridgeshire. It's driven bird country that's almost as famous to shooters as Vinny is to film and footy fans. The bird shooting season is over. He's invited a dozen of his friends to try out the simulated game day run here by his old pal, Richard Clark. Brad and Guy, Messrs Pitt and Richie, couldn't make it, but plenty of his buddies could. Six Mile Bottom has a special place in Vinny's heart. Hey, Click, how many pigeons did I shoot with Guy that time over at uh, 220 or something? Rats, the rat shooting was unbelievable. At night, lamping at night, shooting the rats off the top of the truck. With a 410? With 20 balls, 410, but you, you know, five yeah. shots. It just, it just move at night yeah. with the rats. And then we'd and then we'd come through then and ferret it all. Oh marvellous. Yeah. And foxes? Last yeah, a lot of foxes, yeah. <laughs> well I showed you that picture. He had he had uh, I was lamp and he had twelve and twelve shots. And he didn't want to go for the thirteenth in case he missed it. <laughs> the guns are going to have thousands of clays over them today in all sorts of tricky ways, from rabbits to grouse. First a pheasant drive to warm them up. We're split into teams of two or three guns, and once the whistle goes, Vinny is transported back onto the footy pitch. Yeah, Georgie! Great shots, and again! George, and again! Great shot, and again, George! Oh, behind it. Lovely shot, and again, George! George, stop! You crap! Go on, George, and again, and again, George! Yeah, I've been teaching him for 10 years, you'd think it was 10 days. Yeah, on the right, on the right! He has right. lots of encouragement and advice Stop to his him. fellow guns, Good and then it's you. Vinny's go. He hasn't shot for over Five. a year, but he's on fire. Six! Oh. <laughs> oh. Seven, out of eight. Seven out of eight. Many people know of Vinny's association with field sports. His dad has had a shoot for years, and as a result, Vinny started young. I started about five years old, I suppose, a little 410. Rested it on the hide, shot a sitting pigeon at decoys. <laughs> George is still doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I caught my uh, first trout at Rutland when I was about seven, fly fish. So I got into it early, yeah. It has continued down through the Jones family tree. Vinny's son, Aaron, is shooting today. The poor chap is teamed with me, and before you ask, no, he didn't play <laughs> little Chris in Lockstock. <laughs> yeah, it just goes in the family. He's been brought up with it. There's a picture at the pub there. He was about four years old when he was driving around all these. This used to be the main shoot, six mile bottom shoot, where we was coming. He's about four years old on the tractor, Aaron, driving around here. The Six Mile Bottom Shoot offers rolling countryside, not deep valleys. It's perfect for partridge and even grouse. Well, the simulated kind. And I'm doing things properly. Double gunning, swapping the Browning 725 for a pair of Stephen Grant's Jones Jr. loading. Richard Clark runs the days here. He has seen the corporate clients drift away and the new ones come in and now it's come full circle. Then we decided to go into the open market, have the stag do's, the hen do's, jolly up for mates. Um, and have mix and match days where we do um, two people come and then we match them up with another 12 like-minded people and then of course they come and then they, it's just snowballed and snowballed and snowballed and we just get so many people come 
uh, and we've probably got every Saturday now booked between now and the shooting season. Richard says we will have about four and a half thousand clays over us this morning, shooting about five thousand shells. With the double guns, surely five thousand one hundred. Next, it's the duck drive. None of it's being taken too seriously and the guys are having a great time. Now it's time to rest the shoulder, have a sharpener and a proper chat with ex-professional footballer, Hollywood actor and field sports fan, Mr Vinnie Jones. So Vinnie, tell us the real reason behind a career total of 12 red cards. I'd scored against Nottingham Forest away, got sent off afterwards. We jumped in the car, we listened to the rest of the game in the, in the, on the radio on the way home and shot about 80 rabbits that night. We went, we said, bugger the game, we go lamping. So we shot down the motorway and we was lamping an hour later. So this old bad boy Vinny thing, that was all just a ploy to get you some more shooting? Not all the time, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> I used to work my red cards, put it that way. If I got a nice invite on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Worth doing. Um, what, what did all that world think of shooting and, and the world you're in now? Oh, they thought I was barking mad. Yeah. I used to come in with all the pheasants and the trout and all that for the boys. <laughs> they used to think I was nuts. We, we used to go up to an away game. I remember we played Man United away on a Wednesday night, so we'd go up early. And then we'd have a walk around the town, you know, to stretch our legs. So all the boys are going, Hugo Boss and Armani and all that. I used to go into the local army and navy store, come out, and one day, someone reminded me that the other day, they're, they're all there, like, you know, bought a suit, bought a shirt. I, I bought a dozen decoys. <laughs> Vinny's been able to enjoy sports all over the world and is now a keen golfer. But what's his desert island sporting day? Now, I'd say, you know, my favourite probably is is either lamping, foxing, or, uh, or decoying pigeons, I think. It's probably out of everything, out of all the... Grouse shooting's great, it's probably the best, probably the best in the world, but, you know, when you're paying 200 quid a brace, it's a bit... It's a bit <laughs> Fierce. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, a 50, 60 day decoying pigeons is awesome. But here, so here is really it, isn't it? We've, you know, we've got everything here. I've got a couple of lads here that have just got into shooting, that have been clay shooting. They're, they just can't believe it, they're speechless. You know, I so, said, well, you know, if you can get onto these, you know, that's your sport in shooting. You've got the ducks, the grouse, the pheasant, the partridge, you know, and it's all simulated. But, um, you know, what I think is, you know, like at golf, you go out and you get on the range and hit a few balls. And I just said to, to Richard that, you know, to go out and have like one of these stands before you actually shoot the partridge and pheasants, you know, might be a little bit better on the pickers up. <laughs> we not so many runners. After a few snaps, we're back to it once Richard has moved the family herd away from any potential danger. This time I'm double gunning on rabbits. At the other end, Vinny has gone all big Chris on us, shooting from the hip and hitting them. This stand is fantastic fun and it is non-stop. No time to think, just shoot and shoot some more. I've got the black mist. Brilliant. The final stand is the high pheasant. Even David has a go with the 725, and if he can hit something with it, well, it must be a good gun. He then goes on to shoot Vinny's gun with Mr. Jones loading for him. That's the dinner party conversation sorted for a few years. Once we've had our fill of shooting, it's time to fill up with a steak done just right at the Green Man. The pub is owned by Richard. It's full of Vinny memorabilia. They go back a long way. When he left for Hollywood, he just said, click, come over, help yourself, uh, take all this. So all his memorabilia that used to be in his games room at home is now in my pub. And it's been in the pub. We've had the pub for eight years and it's just great, you know, people. Uh, and if you just look at that, which is the cabana, he's got the sign which says cabana twin with six mile bottom and I've got it cabana twin with Mulholland Drive. So yeah, we do go back a long way. Yeah. A delicious steak is a grand way to finish a grand day's fun. If you fancy a day like this at the six mile bottom shoot, top end sport and quality grub start at £150 per person. This doesn't include a guest appearance from Brad or Guy, but you never know, Vinny might be decoying pigeons on a neighbouring field. Well, that really was a fabulous day's shooting. Now to the other hard man of field sports. It's David on the Field Sports Channel, New Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. There's a new world hunting ambassador and she's gorgeous. 
The WFSA Ambassador Award 2014 goes to Teresa Vale, Miss Kansas 2013. Teresa started hunting and shooting competitively in her teens. Her motto now is anything boys can do, girls can do better. Fox hunters, stag hunters, terriermen, beaglers, mink hunters and even mouse hunters are waiting with bated breath. UK Prime Minister David Cameron is preparing to hold a vote on what the government calls viable amendment to the 2004 hunting restrictions, which would allow up to 40 hounds to flush out a fox to face waiting guns, rather than the two ordered by Tony Blair. The vote is expected to be shortly after we film this bulletin. French farmers are legally wolf hunting again, even though it was banned by the Berne Convention. Farmers in Provence lost 100 sheep to a growing wolf population in January and 6,000 in 2013. So they've obtained an exemption which allows them to shoot 24 of the estimated 300 animals. With the spring hunting season about to start in Malta, anti-hunting groups such as cabs and bird life are reporting widespread trapping. Serins, chaffinches, linnets and greenfinches all migrate to Europe from Africa via Malta. Both organisations criticise the lack of police presence in the field and the failure of authorities to properly enforce the law to curb the problem. The Aussies have shown that amateur pest controlling works. Over the past two and a half years, the Victorian Fox Bounty Programme has taken a quarter of a million foxes out of the state's wilderness. The government handed out £1.4 million to the Victorian hunters during the time, less than £6 per fox. Compare this to the British Badger Cull, which costs more than £4,000 per badger. Meanwhile, the Australian RSPCA has admitted one of its wildlife welfare officers didn't treat a fox with dignity and respect after it shot an injured fox and left it on the side of a bike path near Adelaide. And finally, it's been a while, but we have a big fox story. Scott McKenzie sent us a picture of this monster fox from the Isle of Skye. It measures 51 inches in length and 21 inches to the shoulder, an inch short of the last Skye monster fox Scott shot. As he says, the Isle of Skye is fast becoming the big fox capital of Britain. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. You'd look better, David, with a shaved head, I think. Now, Roy Lupton is testing penetration of pellets. Squirrels are tough nuts. The arboreal acrobats are full of muscle and sinew, something we know all too well as we ate the last one Softly. with peanut satay and a nice Chianti. It's very good, isn't it? It was tasty, but a little chewy, and that got us thinking. Is it sensible to body shoot a squirrel with an air rifle if it's that hard? Especially when a bit of research on the internet reveals a study suggesting squirrels can resist the 40 to 60 pounds of force from a bird of prey like a goshawk because of their skin thickness. Well, we have a cunning plan, comparing the pellet punching protection of three different skins over to Hannibal Lecter. The first one that we're uh, taking the sample from is we've got the skin from a brown hare and it's already got a, a puncture wound in it. This is one of the ones that was uh, taken by the eagles earlier on in the season. It's been, on, been in the freezer. Next up is the squirrel. They are just a very, very tough, muscly, sinewy animal. But we'll see if the stopping power is within the skin or if it is within the muscle fibres further within the body. But he's certainly not giving it up easily. Finally, the fallow skin. I mean, quite clearly, we wouldn't be shooting at a deer with an air rifle, but it's just to give us some sort of comparison. Before we shoot at the skins, let's feel the width, not the quality. So David is taking my lovely clean calipers that I use for reloading, and he's making me get them mucky. There we go, right. OK, she's zero down. So we shall start off with the hair. So that is 0.99 of a mil. We'll now go for the squirrel and see where that is. That is point, so that's 1.27 of a mil. So bearing in mind the squirrel's a lot smaller than the hare. And that's considerably thicker. And then we shall go for a bit on the fallow. I don't think this is going to be an overly fair test because obviously the fallow has got a lot more fur. 
we're getting a lot of compression on the hair there, so that's about four we've ended up at on there. The squirrel is thicker than the hair. So how to test penetration? We're going to wrap these around a candle because the Field Sports Channel budget won't stretch to ballistic media. So the next best thing that we can come up with is a fancy candle. And as David is a, an old romantic, we knew he'd have quite a few stashed away in his bedroom. We're going to shoot at the brown hair, the squirrel, and at the fallow deer, and just see if we get any difference with the depth of penetration from the pellets within the candle. The dressed candle looks like it could be a hit in the next Argos catalogue, but we have serious ballistics tests to perform on the ornamental fur Good. burner. If you'd like to purchase one of our authentic Field Sports Channel Christmas candles, details online. Roy places the candle about 25 yards away from the shooting position and starts with a control shot. And there she goes there. Okay. He works his way down the skins, trying to avoid the elastic band. And it looks like I hit the elastic band then. <laughs> So, with all the pelts pelleted, what incredible evidence have we elicited from the candle of truth? You can see, shots have gone perfectly through the skin. Then we've got the deer pelt, and we'll see if that's made any difference at all. Yeah, look at that. So, immediately, we've got far less penetration with the thicker deer skin. That's right on the top, so it's not even held in there at all. The hair skin was incredibly thin and you can see immediately that that has buried itself into the candle. That's pretty much what we thought, but we will just measure those and see. So that is 3.50, that's, so that's with the squirrel. With the fallow, the back of the pellet hasn't penetrated past the exterior of the candle at all. And then with the hair, 5.53. Conclusive proof that a squirrel is tougher than a hair. Kel surprise, the thickest skin limits the pellets to the greatest extent. But does this mean that a sub 12 foot pound air rifle should be limited to head shooting squirrels? We need another test! Really no. Chaos defrost. I think that's quite fitting for a squirrel. To be as close to the real thing as mm. possible, this semi frozen volunteer needs five in the microwave. What a lovely warm squirrel. What we're going to do to test our squirrel is we shall just put him against our candle like so, and then we'll shoot straight into his vital area there, and then the candle behind will give us an exact idea of if we've got complete penetration. The candle of Truth's new design feature might not be as popular as Mark 1, but let's see if the body shot makes it through. Indeed, yes. So what can we take away with us today, Roy, apart from southern fried squirrel and chips? So there we go, it's actually penetrated all the way and caused some damage in the candle there. So from the chest shot on that, I would have had no problem in dropping them, that would have taken the vitals out perfectly. So although squirrels are tough, they're not tougher than a sub 12 foot pound air rifle. Squirrels are tough critters, but if a headshot is not an option, a well-placed chest shot will do the trick if you're within range. Know your rifle, know your quarry, know how thick your squirrel is. From little pellets to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Let's start in New Zealand, where the stag season is well underway. The mighty Waikaramoana is taking out the old stags that aren't going to produce trophy antlers that they want for their clients. The stag on this video has deformed antlers that have twisted into his eye and blinded him, probably from a fight when he was in velvet. Staying in Kiwiland, hooked on boars offers wild boar gumboots and crayfish with a keen hunting tattooist from Ruomo. It dwells heavily on the tats, but stay with it for the hunting and diving. Moving to Russia, turn on captions and translate to your language for this one. Deer Hunter Episode 2 will confirm what you suspected, that deer stalking is much the same the world over. We're really rattling around the world this week. Next is goose hunting barnacle geese at Zyder Deep with Tok Port Fleet, his last outing of the season now that the breeding season is on its way. It is April in the USA, indeed it is April everywhere, and Wild Jaeger is on a Kentucky turkey 
Hunt, Ricky Mills and John McCallum drive down to Delaware and pick up Mike Brent and Richie Condon before hitting the toms with Dale Kaiser. Now let's go long range. Thomas Haugland offers the long range blog 84, a long wait. Actually, this is fairly short range. A good dog tells you when deer are close, says Thomas, so you can focus on your work with the binoculars. Obama wants to ban black spiky guns in the United States. Brown straight ones are fine. Well, Americans like a little rubber armour coating in a Piccadilly rail. To prove it, here is a 930-yard coyote shot. More knobbly American rifles. Stalking Axis deer with the M4 carbine is just perfect for Texas native double O. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you are missing the fishing films and the air gun films. Watch our new shows, Airheads and Fishing Britain. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv Here's a quick plug for our other programmes. Fishing Britain at 7pm UK time every Friday features the incredible Howell Morgan and the barely believable Ant Glasgow Jr. on a wild Welsh lake looking for large angry pike. There's a story of a 40 pounder out there. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. Airheads at 7pm every other Thursday has the usual round of items for the discerning air gunner leading on thieving magpies. What's James Marchington going to do about this? There, that was easy. And it is Schools Challenge TV week. The kids are armed to the teeth and competing in the first leg of the Schools Challenge competitions, this one held at the Oxford Gun Company. We bring you all the action from this clay shooting event. Well, we are back next week. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen or go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.